So I'm one of those people for a very long time that wanted to live like a minimalist, wanted to live a simpler life, wanted to find a place where I felt peace at home and felt more relaxed, but also so that I could start achieving and going after new goals and trying new things and having some free time to achieve things that I never thought possible. So we're going to talk today about how I stopped just going around and round on that wheel of wanting to be a minimalist and wanting to live a simpler life and how I actually got off of that spinning wheel and started living like a minimalist. So let's start with one of the biggest problems I was having, and that was that I really wanted to be a minimalist, but that's just it. I kept telling myself, yes, one day I will be a minimalist. But when you keep telling yourself that over and over again, that one day in the future I might actually be a minimalist, that one day I might change my mindset and actually live a different life, your brain doesn't take you seriously. Your brain actually has decided that that one day is not going to be today because you have convinced yourself that you are not going to be doing that, that that is not how you're going to be living your life because you keep saying that one day in the future it's going to happen instead of saying it's going to happen right now. So that was one of my biggest problems is that I just had to get over myself and I had to stop thinking that in the future things were going to happen and I had to actually start calling myself a minimalist. And in reality, that was super hard in the beginning because I didn't feel like I was actually living like a minimalist. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just trying new things. I was learning a lot from other people's YouTube videos and reading lots of books, but I didn't feel like I was really living the lifestyle. And so to call myself a minimalist felt very uncomfortable, but it was one of those things that I realized if I wanted to live this kind of life, if I wanted to have a real change happen to me, then I had to start telling myself that I was that person. Because what I have found in tons of research is that there are lots of scientifically based studies that show that when we talk to ourselves, our brain starts believing what we say. That's exactly why when you are talking so negatively about yourself, maybe you're talking about your body, maybe it's you're talking about things that you just don't think are possible, that your brain actually believes what you tell it. So when you stop telling yourself the negative and you started telling yourself, I'm a minimalist. I'm going to start thinking about my purchases before I make them. I'm going to start decluttering my house. That actually drove a lot of action that I just felt was impossible when I kept telling myself that one day I will be this. So let's enter into the new phase. Now that we've figured out that maybe we had some resistance, maybe we were scared, maybe our dream was so big that we just felt it was unattainable. Now we know it is. Now we are calling ourselves a minimalist or we are saying that we live a simple life, whatever term you like better. Now what I want you to do is start reviving that dream. And here are some ways that you can do that. So in the beginning and through the first couple years, I had a lot of resistance from my husband. Not in a negative way, like he was being mean to me about minimalism, but I think he just didn't understand it. And I was having a lot of my own struggles because I was figuring out myself and I was being afraid of things that I shouldn't have. And I was overwhelmed with this dream I had. And so obviously it came out as confusion to my husband. But what I will say is that as I started to build my own confidence, I started to believe in myself and tell other people that I believed in myself. And this was my goal that he really started to buy into it, that as he saw me walk out of stores with nothing in my hand, that as he saw me get rid of things and stop bringing things in, as he saw me be able to organize our life and make both of our lives and our whole family's life a lot easier day to day and a lot cleaner home just because I didn't have so much to clean, he really started to buy into what this dream of was mine. And I think once our spouses or the people around us start seeing the benefits of our changed lives, they start to see that, wow, maybe there is something going on here. Maybe there is something worth checking out in this minimalist lifestyle that they keep talking to me about. So if you are feeling kind of lonely and the people that you live with are not buying into it yet, then I think the best thing that happened to me was I started this community and I started to talk to you guys and I started to share with other people the things that I've learned and learn from all of you here at Minimal Ease. And it was the best thing I've ever done for myself. And that is because 
you might not have all the support that you need around you all of the time when it comes to learning and growing and being a minimalist. And that's okay. You don't need everyone in your life right now to completely support your dream. If you know what your dream is, then keep going because people here on Minimal Ease will support your journey and we will talk to you about it and we will share our own ideas and our thoughts and how we live and so that we can all grow together. So if you are new here, go ahead and subscribe to this very supportive community of minimalist like-minded people here. And also if you are going through a minimalist journey, go ahead and throw a heart emoji down below so we know that we're all in this journey together. But build a tribe. Build a group of people that you feel like you can talk to, whether it's just online and we are where you feel comfortable talking and telling about your journey first, or if you can find some friends outside, if you can find some Facebook groups or Instagram groups that are supporting this lifestyle of living with less, then you 100% will be pushed in the right direction. You will get new ideas and you will grow so much more than if you were a solo island living by yourself. Now, of course, I wish I could just end this video right here and say that you just have to start telling yourself a minimalist and everything will change. But the fact is that wasn't true. What I realized was the next step and definitely more uncomfortable for me was actually starting to tell other people that I was a minimalist because I realized that people still expected me to go out and buy a lot of stuff, that people expected me to want a lot of their things. And I had to start telling people that I was living a minimalist lifestyle, so I didn't want all these extra things and I wasn't going to go binge shop with them anymore. And while that was very uncomfortable because when you really start telling yourself you're a minimalist and then you have to go tell everybody else, people start giving you weird looks sometimes. I definitely got a few myself and I got a few uncomfortable conversations that in the end all turned out good and everyone was accepting. I did get made fun of a little bit here and there. And especially because I was definitely a shopaholic for a long time, people I feel like just looked at me weird because I don't think they believed me. And I was having a hard time believing me. And so of course it was all uncomfortable, but hey, it led me to where I am today. So it was all worth it. But having those conversations with other people, though extremely uncomfortable, helped me believe myself, helped me buy into my own thinking that I was a minimalist. I wasn't just trying to be a minimalist. I wasn't one day going to be a minimalist. I was right now. And convincing other people very much helped me convince myself. So the third thing that you might find as you are living as a minimalist is you might have some resistance. And once I hit the resistance phase, it was very difficult to keep going, to buy in that this was actually gonna change my life. Because what I found is that once you get over decluttering the easy stuff, the trash, the things that obviously you haven't used in years or your kids haven't used those toys since they were two years old and now they're 15, those things are relatively easy to get rid of and you know they should go. But once you start hitting the resistance phase, the things that are a little bit harder, the things that you have been keeping forever and so you feel uncomfortable getting rid of, you might have a big slowdown. What I'm gonna tell you is that that is very normal. I think a lot of us feel a resistance phase when we are really going for a minimalist home. When I would hit that resistance, I would kind of shut down. My house would get really cluttered again, just from daily living and things that came in. I just wouldn't get rid of them anymore. And I just felt like I was giving up for a while. And so there was definitely a phase that I just didn't get a lot done. And my house felt a lot more cluttered again. And I felt defeated. But there is definitely a way of getting out of that phase. So we're gonna go into that. So don't worry if you're in the resistance phase, that's okay because it's very normal. And if you were to look at me at that time when I was really slowing down the decluttering, you might just say, oh, you're being lazy. There are piles of trash everywhere still. Or I started decluttering an area and so I took everything out and then I just stopped. And then that room is completely cluttered for weeks at a time. And so you might look at me and say, hey, you're just being lazy. You should just go get it. You should just go finish it and get it done. But what I have found in my research is that laziness is very much attached to procrastination because when we procrastinate, there's usually a reason. It's because maybe our anxiety is heightened or maybe we're feeling overwhelmed or fear or doubt. We're feeling uncomfortable with decisions that we now have to make. And though we might have been motivated in the past, something is stopping us continuing on on 
our journey. But if you look at the research, that is very normal because when things become uncomfortable, we tend to procrastinate. That's just how our brains work for better or worse. So I was recently listening to a YouTuber who was talking about this word resistance and how the bigger the dream, the more resistance that you will be feeling. And so if you have the dream to be a minimalist and you have talked to yourself and you're saying, I'm a minimalist, eventually you might feel that little fear. Like maybe that's not true. Maybe you're going to start talking yourself out of it. Maybe you're just going to start shopping a bunch all over again and filling up those spaces because you felt that feeling of uncomfortable, like I can never achieve this goal. But instead of that, I want you to say to yourself that this resistance that you're feeling, this procrastination you might be feeling is because this is a big dream. This is an important dream. This is something that is going to radically change your life forever. And it is a journey. It's not something that's going to happen overnight. So we get tired and that is totally fine and totally normal. But when you feel that resistance, just remind yourself that the more resistance you feel, the bigger the dream. And my dream of having a minimalist home for many reasons was very scary when I first started or even a couple years ago when I was still struggling with things and just trying to get over myself and over my own fears. It was scary. So there was a lot of resistance. Even starting this YouTube channel, there was a lot of fear. But the bigger the dream, the more resistance you're going to feel just because you feel uncomfortable and it's scary. And while that improvement is 100% up to you, the improvement in your home, the improvement on how your home functions, how you function, and then in turn being able to chase after other dreams because minimalism isn't necessarily the dream. It was a open door to other dreams. It was breathing space to be able to chase more things. What I will say is that anything is figure outable, which is of course a fantastic book. If you haven't read it yet, I just finished reading it, but everything that you want to do in your life is figure outable. The problem is ourselves when we get in our own way because we are afraid. 